bow our heads before the Lord. Father, thank you, Jesus, Lord. We thank you today for this time and opportunity to share your word. Lord, we ask that you move today mightily, that you open up our understandings, our hearts, our minds to what it is that you're saying to us. God, I ask you to speak to me and through me. Guide me and direct me into what you would have us to know today. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen. Give honor to God, because God deserves all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise to his God. Also, give honor to my wife, my wonderful wife, my partner, my companion, my best friend, Sister Naquan, we call her Knox. Also, give honor to Bishop Frank, the angel of this house. Bishop Frank, awesome, awesome man of God. He's just blessed us since we've been here. And of course, Pastor Burrow. Can't leave her out. Give honor to my mother, Pastor McAllister, who made this journey all the way here to us from America, with us from America. And I can't leave out my Kyle. She's back out there at uh, the Children's Church, I believe. And all of you, so many of you, I don't want to start calling names because I have made such a good connection with so many of you in our conversations and, and uh, different things that we've said and shared together. Came in today, somebody said, hey, oh, you said and that was good because, you know, we really feel a part of what's going on here. And today, I'm um, actually going back to a, a sermon that I preached a long time ago, maybe 25 years ago, when I first started preaching. The Lord was speaking to me about this, about this, this week. And um, it starts with a, a question. Let me put my glasses on so I can actually see what I've got right now. Praise God. And the question is simply, it, it'll challenge you. It'll challenge you. And I want you to ask yourself, what do you believe? What do you believe? Very important. Our, our, our text is going to come from two scriptures today. Um, 2 Corinthians 3, 6 and Isaiah 1, 18. And if I had a topic today, it would be, what do you believe the letter killeth? And I got a lot of stuff written down here. I'm going to ask God to guide me. And I'm going to try to move through it very, very quickly. And I pray that everybody's going to get it in and understand what God has said. Amen? Amen. What do you believe? That's the question. The Bible comes in, in Isaiah 118. It tells us, come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Right? So God tells us to come and, and reason. Say, be reasonable. Say it again, be reasonable. Right. Now, to be reasonable, I know it seems simple, right? But reason, to be reasonable, this is able to reason. You have to be able to reason things and put, to put things together. God wants us to be reasonable. God wants us to be thinking people. This doesn't want us to walk through life without thinking and just go on all the time. Say it again, be reasonable. Mm -hmm. So what you believe, determines on your ability to reason. So how you reason the thing, right? We, we, we make things or we reason through things. This happened because that happened. It rained because the clouds got heavy and the condensation and the water fell down. We can see because the light is missing because, because, and we reason things out. Everything happens because of some type of reason. Is that right? And what you believe determines how you view the world around you. However you reason things out, however you put it together in your head. The Bible says, for as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. Jesus said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. It's kind of a weird wording in King James Version of the Bible. But basically it means if, if we don't believe in everything that the prophets and said Jesus calls us foolish and slow of heart. So we want to accept and receive everything that the word tells us without question, without reservation, because it's the word of God. So let me ask you, what do you believe? Reason is a, is a process. Right? It is a process of things that we learn through, through our through our lives, once again, we know this happened because that happened. 
and was king the only able to reason with what our goal is, what is in our head. If it's not in your head, you can't use it to reason. The Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must first believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And then the Bible goes on and says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of the Lord. Do you believe that? What do you believe? I said, we say these things, and they're so deep. that we, 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 we recite these scriptures, and we just take them on the surface, and we don't really realize the depth and what God is actually saying to us. And we have to believe these things, because it's so easy to live on the mountaintop and to say these are things that we believe. But when it comes down to, to the crunch, when it really comes down to call on these things in life of tests and trials and things that we go through, you often have to ask yourself, what do I believe? Mm -hmm. There's nothing more important in life than hearing, believing, and obeying God. All three of them, you gotta hear, you gotta believe, and you gotta obey. And as we said, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So it's so important to read your Bible. You gotta read your Bible. Can't get through without your Bible. Not to memorize your Bible, but to read your Bible. David said, King David said, I'm sure you may have heard this one before, that word about him in my mind. Is that right? That word about him in my mind? No, no, no. That word about him in my heart. Mm -hmm. See, there's a certain class of people who want to tell you all the time that you have to memorize scripture and you have to, you know, do you know that when, when Jesus was tempted by Satan, he didn't respond to Satan verbatim? Do you know actually in, 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 every, in every version of the Bible, Jesus actually says something different? See, it's not what's in your mind. It's not your ability to regurgitate and to, and to recite scripture, but it's what's in your heart. So that's why it's important just to read your Bible. Right? So some, some of the biggest numbers in the world the devil himself is an expert in the scripture. So it's not about just memorizing the scripture, it's about getting in your heart, getting in your mind, and knowing and feeling what God is saying to you, how God is communicating with you. So it's important to read your Bible. If you don't read your Bible, there's nothing you for God to pull out. If you don't read your Bible, you're empty, you're hollow, and that leaves room for the enemy to come in. It is important to read your Bible. If you don't read your Bible, you're defenseless. And it's, it's not, you don't have to be a biblical scholar. All you have to do is read your Bible and God will pull out whatever he wants to come out. The Bible says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Right? And once again, it's not because you're a Bible scholar and you went to the theological seminary and all that. You just have to read. The Holy Spirit said he would bring all things to remembrance. Everything that you need is simply, you simply get by reading. Because then the Bible also says that did you need to study to show yourself approved unto God. Study to show yourself approved unto man. No. Study to show yourself. No. Study to show people that you know this or that. No, no, no. You're reading the Bible, you're studying the Bible so that you can communicate with God so that you can be approved. Because there the scripture lets you know you have to be approved. Study to show yourself approved unto God. You don't want to stand before God and you haven't been proved or approved. The Bible tells us again in Romans 15, 4, for whatsoever things are written for time, written for our learning, that we the patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. Those things that are written in the Bible are for your comfort. Oh, you need comfort today. Look at all the stuff that's going on today. War and rumors of war. Famines, earthquake, hurricane, tsunami, all of these things, are, and it's just by the grace of God that these things are not going your doorstep. We, we, we came, I guess about three months ago now, two, two, two and a half months ago, there was a hurricane in Belita, well, not a hurricane, a tornado in Belita. My wife bought it with her. I didn't bring it with her, she bought it with her. So, the, the tornado, and it was something else, that, 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 that tornado could have been in your, in your front yard. They haven't seen tornado in uh, like hundreds of years or whatever it was, long time in Belito. Right? So let you know that God can do what he wants to do, when he wants to do, how he wants to do. That's 
essence and all the nature of how things God. The Bible also tells us that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God or woman of God may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Once again, if you're not reading your, reading your Bible, you're not going to be furnished unto all good works. There'll be things that you are lacking, that we are lacking. And then once again, the last scripture in, in that day is for the word of God is quick and powerful. Right? Uh, you hear some people say that word quick means a lot, and it does, but it also means quick. The word of God means first what the word of God means. That word of God is quick and powerful and is sharper than any two-edged sword, divided even into the ascent of soul and spirit. And uh, I'm going to have to stop here a minute. Soul, soul and spirit. What does that mean? Divided soul and spirit. So when I know the word of God, and I, and I understand it, and just because I read the word of God, it gives me the tools to divide between soul and spirit. And what does that mean? That means that when I'm standing here and I'm speaking, right, if you read your, the word, you know what's coming out of my soul. Praise God. You know what's coming out of my soul, and you know what's coming from the Spirit of God. See, the, the word of God divides soul and spirit. See that? When you listen to the word of God, and I study, when you read the word of God, it gives you divine insight and discernment into everything that's going on around you. It gives you that what that gift, right? Because the gift is not just a gift of discernment. Discernment is a gift of discernment of spirits. And when I know the word of God, it's simply by reading my word of God, I know everything that's coming out of me. Yet, the word of God makes me a mind reader. Yes, it does. It makes me a mind reader. So the spirit. And then, joint and marrow. So what's joint and marrow? Right? Marrow, when I'm talking marrow, that's the stuff that's in my bones. That's the stuff that I laid out before God and cried and fasted and prayed. That, that's narrow. That's, that's in me. That's narrow. But then joy, joy is the stuff you attach to yourself. Joy is when you come and you take somebody, somebody else's prophecy. You want to come and tell me something that somebody that, that sounds like you. You know, you want to get on the, the Christian cliche bandwagon. You want to say what's real popular and everybody else is saying. That's, the, that's joy. Stuff you just attach to yourself. Right? As opposed to narrow. And the word of God divides that. So I know when it's God and I know when it's not. But I only know that by reading the word of God. And the Bible, the it comes out of the end of the scripture and lets us know that the word of God is the discern of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So it just brings it all right down. Yes, I, I know what's going on because I read my Bible. But if you don't read your Bible, you will be completely lost. Now let me ask you again, what do you believe? Mm -hmm. Me and my wife use YouTube. Among other things, we actually read the Bible, but we play YouTube, we play the Bible all night long. We just put it on, on random and uh, use the NLT version. And God just, just speaks to us all night long. And it is amazing with the word of God, because remember the word of God is quick and powerful, sharpening into a sword. The word of God is alive. And God knows just what to put play, he knows just what book to play next. He knows just, knows just what to say. And as you speak, the word just filters into your mind, it filters into your heart, and then God is able to bring it out whenever he wants to, because the word is alive and it will walk into your life, it will deal with whatever you're going through right now. God is a right now God. God is dealing with the things that are going on in your life, in your heart, in your mind, right now. God wrote a book thousands of years ago, over a span of thousands of years, to you and you and you and you and you individually. It's for you. It's for you individually. But then you have to ask yourself, what do I believe? What do you believe? It's one thing to say that sounds real good, but do you really believe it? Mm -hmm. Once again, you're only able to reason with the thoughts and the information that you have in your own head. The reason this happened is because this. This happened because of that. And you can only understand this if you know this or that, or I'm sorry, you can only understand this if you know that. That makes sense? Amen. I'm supposed to be using this marker. 
my eyes are going to be hey, It's supposed to help me keep my faith. But I keep losing it. Y'all praying for me? Are y'all praying for me? Okay, y'all pray for me. Y'all stay in here. This is not a show. Praise God. I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking with y'all. And I'm, try, I'm trying to get myself, myself comfortable here because we, we have to have this conversation. Because God has some things that he definitely wants to say to us in this place because we're going somewhere. But you have to believe that God is taking you. If, if it doesn't make sense for God to say anything to you and then you, you forget about it. It doesn't make sense for God to, we want God to speak to us. Speak to us, Lord, speak to us, but we want your presence. And then God comes, shows up and speaks to you and tells you what's going on. And then you just have this whole home attitude like, this is, um, this is such a privilege for me to be here. Such a privilege for me to be here is uh, so unexpected that, that all of this would happen. And I know it's the Lord. And it is a, an amazing thing. Praise team, do not take it for granted. Drummer, um, keyboardist, songs, songsters, <laughs> do not take it for granted. Anything you do in the service of the Lord is the most grandest thing you can do in the universe. The God of the universe has called you into his service. Uh, they, they, they said, I'd rather be a, a Lord keeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of, of the young God. I'd rather, I'd rather be a usher than to sit down at, at the biggest casino than to sit down as a head of state or a president. I'd rather be an usher in the house of the Lord. But what, what do you believe? What do you believe? You can only understand once again the things that you know. Now this is where things get complex and a little, little complicated, okay? Not confusing, but complicated and complex. But I need you to listen, listen carefully, right? You need to fill your heart and your mind with the word of God. You've already said that. Because the enemy will always try to point out seeming contradictions in the Word of God. And if you don't read the Word of God, if you don't know the Word of God, you'll miss it every time. And you'll get sucked up into a lot of foolishness. See, the, the reality is the natural man, right, does not receive the things of God. Now, I know we think that we're so holy, we're so holy, and we're so righteous, and we just have so much into us, and we're so spiritual. And we can't be, be deceived, but everyone in here has a natural part to them. Right? Everyone here in here is, is susceptible to deception. And the, the, the thing that will deceive you more than anything else is your own heart. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Yes, your heart is more deceitful than the devil. Deceitful above all things and desperate.
don't do that. Don't do that. And you turn around because you got a scripture, but the Bible says. Right? right? Because we want to use the, we want to use the word of God to do what we want to do. A good, another good example of this is called prosperity ministry. Mm -hmm. See, when, whenever you're, you're dealing in, in the scripture, when you don't know the scripture, when you have not declared the full counsel of the Lord, when you just hear the parts that you want to hear, when you just hear, I'm blessed and highly favored, when you just want to, you know, when you just want to hear that you know, God has said he will supply all of our needs according to his, his riches and glory, yes, those are true. Those are, those are very true. And God does have those things for you. But there's also another scripture that says those who live godly must suffer persecution. Right? There, there's a, there's a, a, a give and take. There's always a contradiction. Jesus there shows us the a seeming contradiction in scripture. Where the devil comes and says, um, take these stones and make them into bread. And Jesus says, man shall not live for our bread alone. So if, if you're not careful, you have to be honest with yourself. This why gets complex. This is, why, this is why it gets a little sticky here. Because you've got to be honest with yourself. Because see, some of us are so holy when somebody says there's contradictions in the scripture. There's no contradictions in the scripture. The scripture doesn't contradict itself. And, and from, from a certain perspective, from a natural perspective, that natural man that does not receive the things of God, that natural man will find the contradictions all in the Bible. Now, the spirit does not contradict itself. Right? So, this is why we go to uh, my, my, my second scripture, the second Corinthians, right? Which is the letter killing, but the spirit give life. I mean, when you are so in, into that letter and that memorization of scripture, but you're not consulting the spirit of God, right? You kill yourself because the letter killeth, but the spirit give life. So you have scriptures that may seem to contradict one another, but it's, it is so necessary to be in touch with the Spirit of God, to be in touch with the presence of God, so that He can speak to you and tell you which way to go. Tell you what scripture it is that you're supposed to follow. But those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Uh, but then you have to ask yourself, once again, what do I believe? It's easy to say these things. It's easy to read the Bible. It's easy to talk faith, but then when you're going through the fire, when you're, when you're going through the test, when you're going through the trouble, those terrible tears, test, trials, troubles, troubles, turmoil, the tempest, when you're going through all of that, what do you believe? Abraham had to develop a relationship with God. If I talk about Abraham being the father of the father of faith, Abraham didn't just get up one day and he's, he's the father of faith. He didn't just wake up one day and heard a voice in his head, kill your son. He said, okay, I'm going to go kill my son. If, 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 if that was the case, Abraham was crazy. Abraham had a problem. And let me, let me advise you, if you hear a voice in your head telling you to, to kill somebody, don't do it. Yeah. Just hold, hold off a second. And just wait. Yeah. See, when you, you have to look at Abraham, you have to look at his life and what, 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 he, what he's done. Right? And, and how God wants to deal with you. There's a process of time that God has to take you through from point A to point B. Abraham was over in Ur, Ur of the Chaldees, and as the Lord was speaking to him, the Lord spoke to him all the time. The Lord would speak to him. And I'm speaking on the authority of the Holy Spirit. The Lord would speak to him. And then he would hear it in his mind. He's going to get an impression. And then he would see whatever the Lord said. He would see it come to pass. And he'd be like, whoa, what was that? And he'd do it again, and he'd do it again, and do it again. Then he thought to himself one day, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to, I see it now. I had it dream, I, I see it, I understand it. I'm going to act on it now. And it was a process that he was taking through and to, to get to the point where he can hear a voice that says to him, sacrifice your son, kill your son, Give me your only son. He knew the voice of the Lord. So there was no debate because he knew the voice of the Lord. But you don't know the voice of the Lord. You can't know the voice of the Lord if you don't read his word. Right? So it, it, you, you still have choice. You still have free will. And God has designed it this way. God has designed it so that you can turn that stone into bread. Or you can live by the bread of life, by every word that proceeds out of God. He designed 
designed as a choice. He designed it so that you have the opportunity to go to him and to hear. And it's like that in every step and every phase and every place of, of, of your life. But it's so easy to eat that bread. So easy to take the scripture. So easy to go in the direction that you want to go. And this is not the time for that. God has some very, very, very tremendous things that he's taking us into. The world is changing considerably and quickly. Very, very, very quickly. And God has work for us to do. And it's going to be very, very difficult to do the work of the Lord when the, word, when the Lord tells you to do a thing, but you have scripture in your mind and your heart because there's things that you want to do and you're arguing with the Lord. But what do you believe? What do you believe? God is always speaking, but some have been trained to be dismissive and even combative to the word of God. And we have to take down those defenses. We have to allow God to come in and speak to us. Tell us what it is that we need to know and, and understand that we don't know. I come to you that I might that you might have life and life more abundantly. Right? When the Bible says that, but the Bible says the poor will be with you always. So, so which one are you? Oh, I'm all abundance. I'm abundant. I'm abundant. But what if God? What, what if it's what if it's your what if it's your your lot in life to remain poor? Is that a bad thing? Is that a bad thing? Jesus said, a man's life is not in the blood of things. That's what you see. You get in trouble preaching and teaching and saying what Jesus said. Hey, you get in trouble. A man's life is not in the blood of things. In, in this life, you, you're going to suffer persecution. In this life, woe will we'll come. Woe we'll, we'll will come. In this life, you'll be offended. Woe we'll will to those who bring your face. You're going to be offended. So many things are going to happen to you. So many things. But the, the consolation is that Jesus will be with you through it all. Jesus says, therefore, having food and raiment, be content. We, we, are, we, are, um, we have been collected in the church, not even by people. But we have been so indoctrinated that we suppose that gain is godless. That things, things that you have, the way that you look at your parents, those are the things that, 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 that verify that you are God. Me and my wife were just talking the other day about Lazarus. Right? Lazarus. We, we, we know the story of Lazarus where he, he died. He sat outside of the gate with dogs with his swords. And then he died. Lazarus died. And he went into paradise. Went to Abraham's bosom. And a rich man that saw him all every day. The Bible said he's there sumptuously. Right? So Lazarus, he was there and he died in poverty. But when he, when, he, when he lifted up his eyes, he lifted up his eyes in paradise. Where this man, this rich man, okay, rich man, he lifted up his eyes in hell. He was in fire, flames, and, and torment. So, I mean, how, how many times have, have you worried and just felt like everything was going to fall apart? And then on the other side of you, you realize I didn't have to worry at all because God had it all the time. We, we, we worry about so much about my own. My, 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 me and my wife, we laughed, and she, she went to school when she was younger here in South Africa, and she, she was telling me, she didn't realize she was poor, and she, she got to school. She was so happy. She was running around and playing, and, and everything was just so, she was having such a good time, and it wasn't until she got to school, and the other little children let her know that she didn't have as much of them, and then it shifted from the happiness that God provides us each and every day, it shifted from the, the food and raiment that we are to be content with, and that's what God said, Having food or him and be content. It shifted from the um, great game. I lost the scripture in my head. Godliness with content is great game. Praise God. It shifted from that to I know I need this. I need that. I need, I need to be in a mega ministry. I need, I, need um, I need a limousine. I need a, I need all, all of these different things that we, that we think we need. And you'll get those things and then you'll lift your eyes up in hell and you'll be surprised. Do you know that there are those who are going to stand before Jesus? And say, we cast out demons in your name. We, we can help the sick. We've done all of these miraculous things. And you're going to say, from me. I don't even know you. Now, the amazing thing to me about that, one of the amazing things to me about that, really, is that when these people get in front of God, they are people. They, 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 they are completely deceived. God knows everything. You 
go and you argue them. Well, I, I, I thought, no, we, we, we've done this, Lord. We, we, we've done that. We cast out. They completely deceived. They really, really thought they were doing a good job. I pray all the time, Lord, don't let me be deceived. Don't, don't let me be deceived. I don't want to be one of those that get right down to the end of the line and thought everything that was going, going well. I was going through all the motions. I was doing everything. Thought I was doing everything right. Mm -mm. And missed it. And missed it. Praise God. So what, what do you what do you believe? What, what do you believe? It's so, so, it's so important to, to, to really examine what it is that we believe because we want to believe God. The Lord is saying that we are entering in a season of discomfort. We're entering, we're entering a, a season of discomfort. Progression, moving forward and blessing, but discomfort. Um, God wants to be engage with you directly. God wants, God wants to speak to you. He wants to speak to your heart. He wants to speak to your mind. He wants to speak to you. The um, reasoning, many times, it doesn't make sense because when, when God speaks to you, you can't reason out what, what God is saying. There's no sequence to what God is saying. God says it, boom, it's there, it's prophetic, and we're walking to that thing, but we can't reason it out because we can't say it. This will happen because this happened, and this will happen because this happened. It takes faith to believe God. To believe God because you can't trace it. There's, there's, there's no logic to it. There's no reason to it. It seems senseless. See, the, the, uh, the, the word, spiritual things, are foolishness. They're foolishness to the natural man. So, some other words for, for foolishness. One of the words for foolishness is senseless. Senselessness. Senseless. You can't sense it. You can't put it together. Right? So when God is moving, you, you won't be able to make sense of it. And because you have that logical mind, because you want that in your mind, you want everything to make sense, you want all the dots to connect and everything, it's very easy for you to shut down what God is saying to you, what he's speaking to you, what he's speaking in, in your life. It's very easy to, to do away with that because it doesn't make sense to you. Somebody takes faith. See, when, once again, back to Abraham. Abraham understood because of his relationship, because of speaking to God, because he spent time with God. When you don't spend time with God, when you don't speak to God, you're in total ignorance. You're in total darkness. And, the, and, and, and you'll be prone to wonder. You'll be prone to wonder why things aren't working out for you. Things don't work out out here. Things work out in here. Things work out in here, in your heart and in your mind. That's where things work out. It's not about the things that you have. It's about heaven. It's about dwelling with God in eternity. And that's where he wants to get us to. So God wants to, to get us there. And God has been speaking to us about that our Bishop Frank has been sharing with us the prophet, the, the parable and the prophecy of the evil. Right? And see, you gotta understand that prophecy is all about things that you're going into. Right? Prophecy is all about things that you're going into. It, or, or you're, it's not really about things that you're in. Because if you're in it, then you miss that prophecy. Prophecy is to tell you before you go into before, before tell, tell you before you go into it. So when these things come to us, when these prophecies come to us, we may be experiencing some of the things, but the Lord is preparing us for something that's coming. The Lord is getting us right for something that's coming. That's what prophecy is. But you got to ask yourself, what do, what do I believe? Do I believe that God is preparing me, that God is getting me ready for something that I can't see now? And that's exactly what God is doing. This comfort, it must be. Jesus is the spirit. Jesus is the very spirit of prophecy. The very spirit of prophecy. And it's so important to be in tune with that spirit because, once again, the letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. Mm -hmm. Praise God. You have to trust that God knows where you are. He knows exactly what your life looks like in every aspect. There's nothing beyond the scope of his knowing. There's nothing beyond the scope of his understanding. Jesus, the Lord says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. So God, so God already has, has it all planned out. 
He already knows just what he expects from you. You may be expecting something different. If you expect something different, you, you may be disappointed and you're wondering, well, why, why, why isn't this working out? Why, why isn't that working out? We have to accept what God allows in our lives. We have to accept what, what God is God's going to take you through. What God may not take you through the way you want to go through. But he's going to take you through. It is his promise that he will never leave you or forsake you. That really, really helps when you're in touch with him and he can speak to you. And take you through all of these things as he speaks to you, as he gives you revelation and understanding. You must be patient because my God has to communicate with you first. God has to communicate with you first. No man come to the Father except that the Father first draw him. Have to be drawn to God. Jesus said, I am truth, the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto. I'm sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> Praise God. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So Jesus has to draw you first. So if you read the scripture so much and you just read the scripture, just read the scripture, you come in, you get the sermon, you come in to get the books, and you get all these help and stuff like that and everything, but you're not talking to God, there's a very great chance that you may be missing. Mm -hmm. God was going to the place where it goes. In Isaiah 30, 21, and thy ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way, walking in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left, God will speak to you. God will speak to you so clearly and it's just, it's just about honor. Right? But you gotta believe that. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't believe something, you won't even work towards it. If you don't believe that God can speak to you, if you don't believe that God will, 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 will speak to you, it, it'll just be the most boring, dry thing to you in the world. So many of us want to be titillated, you want to be excited, you want God to take the whole thing, you just want to sit back and, and just put it on autopilot, but if it's not working that way, and the Lord is so me, he's got deliverance, he's got blessings, he's got all kinds of gifts and all kinds of miracles and all kinds of wonders he wants to create, things that he wants to do in your life. But you have to take instruction. You have to be obedient. You have to be able to hear. You have to understand. That when, 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 when back to Abraham, when God spoke to Abraham, Abraham was able to hear, was able to understand and be obedient. And because of his obedience, because of his understanding, it's because he took action, God talked spoke to him. Abraham, but his blessing was on the mountain. The blessing was on, on the mountain. When there was the ram in the bush and the angel caught his hand, that was on the mountain. Right? It, 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 obviously, he was terrified when he received that word. But his blessing was on the mountain, and he didn't get to the mountain until he was obedient. Praise God. Jesus said, I, I will never leave you or forsake you. So, through the entire process, okay, the entire process of what God is doing for you, he's right there. He sees you. The Lord sees you. He sees everything that you're going through. He knows you. He knows your heart. He knows, he knows what's going on. He knows just how you feel. If there's nothing that, that, that can happen in your life that God is not completely aware of. God knows every place your mind is wandering, even as you sit here and listen to me now. Right? And these things that are so, that, that may seem to some to be so boring and to be so far off from us and to be so uninteresting are the things, the very things that you need. The very thing that you think that you disdain. The very thing that you despise. The work of the Spirit that He wants to do in you is the very thing that many of you think are so, so, this so, I guess it's too much work. I don't, but Jesus said, and he's saying, if you don't got time for me, I won't have eternity for you. It's a serious thing. No time to play games. The world is in shambles and on fire. And God wants to do the work through you. He wants to get in touch with you. He wants to speak to you. But if you're not, if you don't have the mind to even believe that he can or, or will, if you don't believe that God, you can only reason with the things that you have in your head, in your mind. And if this isn't real to you, then you just won't do it. If this isn't real to you, if you're not willing to be obedient, if you're not willing to walk 
in faith and trust the Lord. What are you doing here? We're wasting, we are wasting our time. If God is real and I don't believe God is real, why am I being here doing this? But then you gotta ask yourself the question, what do you believe?
fast the time. The Bible speak to me because it's, it's not fair to say everything you want to say and then just shut it down and turn away and not give God a chance to speak.
I just want to tell you a dream I had this morning. I shared it this morning. I had a dream that I went somewhere and I went to the counter and they told me, you know what? You got so many points that you got a present to collect. When I, went to the, when I went to the counter, when I gave a small note on a hair, they said, no, you haven't got points, but we got something for you to give to Mrs. Johnny Frank. And they gave me a packet. The packet was, inside the packet, was a big block of gold very big block of gold that I could not carry it. And I was so enthused to see, I said, no, that was for me, because I could not take somebody else present and take it home. When I looked at it inside, it was a heavy bar of gold. When I came to the entrance of this church here, and I saw Leonard standing with all the ladies and praying, and as I walked up the stairs, I saw a black man standing in the porch. I told him, you're back again. The same thing happened a couple of months ago. The same black man I saw standing again with Bishop Potting and twisted the neck. I said, Bishop, no, don't do that. When I came in looking for Bishop inside, and as Bishop not there. And I saw an entrance, when I saw this place, this place people were sitting were royal blue. You must check the color of royal blue. I saw all the people sitting here on the stage were royal blue. Friends, something you have to depend on the total of the Holy Spirit. The enemy is jealous to destroy this place. If you don't believe, as I said this morning, what do you believe? If you don't believe in the Holy Spirit, what is going to do with the future in this building and to our people is something great and mighty. And if you speak, God gave me about four dreams. Four dreams. And I called the minister right down in Albina. And last day of the service day, when I went there, last, the Lord showed me, don't go there alone. And I said, no, I have to go there, but no other people come with me. But I went there. There was a couple last year. There was a Muslim couple sitting there last year. When I went on Monday, this couple gave their life to Jesus. And I prayed for a lady last week in the shop. They don't know Jesus. Everything tied. She told me yesterday, on Friday, she told me, when we pray, when you pray for me in the shop, when I was going on the way to, to, to walk, something fell out of my hand. I spoke to her Friday. She had given her life to Jesus. Friend, God is something great and mighty. So many souls will come in this place, but we have to pray and ask God. God will do something mighty in Bishop's life. Something mighty. You don't know what God will do in this world. Don't look something like Something mighty. Like every part of gold. I'm about to give to Bishop. You know what God is? Five million of gold. God gave me five dreams this weekend. And another unbeliever God gave me dreams. I must go speak to me. Very, very sick. Very sick of what I'm going for. God is giving me dreams and vision. So this morning, what do you believe? Or who you believe? And what do you do with the word that you hear every Sunday? 
is left to you what you believe. Thank you, God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let's keep Bishop Frank in prayer, Pastor Burr. Thank you so much for your, for your time. I can give honor and glory to God once again. I thank Bishop for his trust in, in me. And we want to thank you, each and every one. Let's just. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs>